I would love for you to talk about the difference here in protein quality when we're talking about animal proteins versus plant-based proteins. And I'd love for you to talk about this and you do so beautifully around the bioavailability and absorptability of some of these proteins and the differences sort of that lies within, like, sort of between the two camps. Yeah. So let's just start with the animal proteins. So animal proteins, we've talked about the essential amino acids, those nine, and they're in very specific balances. We need about one gram of methionine. We need about six to seven grams of leucine. We need three grams of lysine. So we need, just like we need specific, you know, we need 60 milligrams of vitamin C. They're exact amounts. And it importantly, all animal proteins, whether it's meats or dairies or eggs or fish, have exactly the right balance for humans. Not surprisingly, plants have the exactly the right balance for plants. <laughs> plants make leaves and stems and roots and seeds and flowers, which are pretty different than brains and hearts and livers and, <laughs> and, and, and limbs, you know, arms. So uh, people need to understand that the plants aren't making proteins, amino acids for us, they're making them for themselves. And so they're not in the right balance. And you'll see proteins like quinoa will offer often advertise uh, that it has all the essential amino acids. Well, it does, but they're in the totally the right balance. And to get enough leucine to actually trigger, trigger muscle protein synthesis would require about seven cups of quinoa at a meal. You know, I, I like to say, you know, things like things like chili or a perfect kind of food. You can have a, a meat in it. You can have your beans in it. You can have vegetables, onions, green pe peppers, tomatoes, whatever. It's a perfect blend of all of the different foods using both plant and animal foods to get the right balance. So the, the, the problem with plant is the amino acids are in the wrong balance. And then the other part of it, again, the amino acids are there for the plant so about 50% of those proteins are attached to fiber. They're part of the structural part of the plant. And humans don't digest fiber. And so the, the amino acids or the proteins that are in the plant aren't available to us. So when we see something like a whole grain cereal that says it, just for easy numbers, let's say it says it has 10 grams of protein in a serving, it's probably only 40% available. The bioavailability of protein from wheat, gluten, is very poor, probably about 40%. And so in, instead of having 10 grams in that serving, it only has four. So where animal proteins are 100% bioavailable, most plant proteins are somewhere between 40 and 60%. So when you see it has 10, at best, you're probably getting five out of it. So if a 55-year-old or 45 woman says, hey, I'm plant-based, I'm vegetarian, for whatever reason, I, you know, whether it's an ethical or economical or whatever environmental reason that they don't want to be consuming meats or animal-based proteins, they would by necessity need to consume more calories in order to sort of equate with the same physiological or metabolical consequences that we're talking here in a 45 or 55 year old woman who's consuming animal proteins, yes? Right, so you know, we've looked at vegetarian and vegan type of meals. The average vegetarian in the US is about 65 grams per day. The average vegan's around 55. We've done some modeling of looking at essential amino acid needs and what we know is that if you get below about 50% of your protein coming from animal protein, you can no longer meet your essential amino acid needs with a plant-based diet. So to your point, you have to increase both the total amount of protein, and that means the total calories. And so typically vegetarians and vegans decrease their protein when in fact they need to increase their total amount. So it's perfectly possible to be vegetarian or vegan, but you're going to have to have a lot of food knowledge about essential amino acids to balance that. You're going to have to either dramatically increase your calories 
or going to a lot of ultra processed foods where you're using isolated proteins to help keep the calories down. The problem in most plant-based pro, whether it's beans or, or seeds or nuts or whatever, your calorie ratio in, in beans and legumes, for example, you're going to get about three or four to one carb to protein ratio. So right. if you're trying to hit 100 grams of protein, you're going to get at least 300 grams of carbs, you know, which is 1,200 calories just in carbohydrates. So there's, it, there's just a lot of difficult problems, and it doesn't mean you can't do it, but it takes a lot of food knowledge and a lot of food skills to make that work. And again, the average adult in the U.S. doesn't have either the knowledge or the food skills to pull that off. So recommending it blindly that we all should have more plant-based diets might sound good, but that's a route to very poor adult health. 